Okay, so we're still on Autodesk Inventor 2020, and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do um, in the sketch, we're going to continue going over these um, uh, sketch tools here. We've done modify, and now we're on to the constraints. Okay, so constraints are really important to, to understand, and the reason is, is is they're used all the time in Inventor, even if you don't know it. So, so um, if we have a, a good example of this is the rectangle. So if I click on rectangle and I make a rectangle, Notice when I click on the rectangle, uh, before I go on and do anything else, the constraints are still visible. So you notice here that the top and bottom line, um, so what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna right click and okay. Notice they disappear, but if I right click in an empty area and click show all constraints, they reappear, okay? And if I highlight two constraints here, so for example, these two constraints are the parallel constraint. This means that these two lines have been marked as parallel that regardless of what else happens, they will be parallel, okay? So right now, if I move this, whoops, if I move, um, if I move these around, you'll notice that this thing will stay a rectangle, okay? Even if I move the sides around, it will stay a rectangle regardless, all right? I can't move a point, right? It just won't let me do it, all right? And that's because of these constraints. Okay, so we have two uh, parallel constraint here, parallel constraint here, and then we have a perpendicular constraint on the bottom. It makes these four lines act like a rectangle. If I were to go ahead and start to delete these constraints, so if I clicked on one and then clicked uh, right click to, oh, it won't let me delete it. I guess it knows it's a rectangle. <laughs> so, okay, so uh, so um, if I were to go through and there we go and deleted this, oh, it's deleting the entire line now. That's interesting. Oh, there we go. Okay, delete. If I delete that constraint now, um, basically what I would have is instead of a rectangle, I would have four lines. Okay, so notice this last one here. Okay, uh, for some reason I've been having trouble. My, my cube has been on rotating for some reason. Okay, so I've deleted all the constraints off this rectangle. Now, Now when I start to move this around, what can happen is it can, it can be not a rectangle, basically. I could move it. Um, for example, if I uh, dimension this, if I dimension this not to be 90 degrees at this point, like 30 degrees, it could go ahead and deform out of shape and become not a rectangle, basically, all right? Um, okay, I'm not sure how good of an example that was, but you get the idea with constraints. The other thing that will happen um, as, you're, as you're drawing something in Inventor is Inventor will actually guess what constraint you want to have placed on something. So for example, if I have a line here and I go up, notice that gray box that appears. There it is, there it is, there it is. Okay, that gray box is basically that, if I were to click on that right now, notice we have a constraint. It's that little white thing right there. Okay, up here next to the line. And that is a, if I highlight this constraint, that's a vertical constraint. So basically, because I drew that line vertical, um, Inventor decided that, hey, you want this line to always be vertical. And so if I were to go over here and try to, say, drag this line around, it wouldn't go anything but vertical ever, okay? If I had it in a shape, like say I was drawing many lines in a shape, and I didn't intend it to be vertical, I just drew it that way for the moment, uh, then later on if I tried to dimension a, a complex shape I'd made out of lines, basically that would always stay vertical, and it can have really unexpected effects if you don't notice that it's there, okay? All right, so all of these things can happen. So basically if I drew another line, notice that this is making it horizontal now below. Okay, if I draw a line up, notice that Inventor is putting a, pair, a perpendicular constraint on it then. Another perpendicular constraint, right? So as I draw lines, Inventor will assume which constraints I want to have on it and apply them as I go. Now, most of the time, they're very convenient and they help us out. But you need to understand that they're there and know that if something starts to go wonky with your sketch, um, that uh, you should look at the constraints, all right? And you can delete them as necessary. All right, so let's take a look at the other constraints here. So basically we have uh, coincident, collinear, con concentric. Okay, so coincident, if we have two lines, uh, let's say we have two lines here. Okay, then if we do coincident, we can basically make their ends, any point, if we select two points, 
those points will then be uh, now occupy the same space. So basically we make two points coincident, right? So now those two points occupy the same space. We can also make two lines collinear, okay? So we have two lines here, one line and two lines. Okay, if we click on the collinear constraint, we can click here and here. And now I have two lines that are collinear. So two, sorry, I keep saying lines because line segment is really long to say. So now we have two line segments that are now occupy the same line, they're collinear. Okay, if I drag them around, notice I can drag these two lines anywhere I want, but because they have that collinear constraint applied to them, they will always be on the same line, okay? And both lines will move it to, to satisfy that constraint. The next one we're gonna look at is cocentric. So we have, let's say we have two circles. Uh, if we have cocentric, we can click on one circle, then another, and the centers of the two circles we will become coincident uh, or occupy the same point. The next one we have is, is a, a pretty easy. It's uh, parallel, so we have two lines, and we click on the parallel constraint, and then click both lines. They become parallel. The next one is perpendicular, as you might imagine. I'm just going to go ahead and delete this previous constraint, and then, then make these two lines uh, perpendicular. There we go. Now they're perpendicular. Okay. Um, I can also uh, kind of layer constraints. So in this case, if we say, hey, they're perpendicular, but I also want this line to be horizontal, I can then make it horizontal, okay? So by using these constraints, we can do a lot of, uh, a lot of um, interesting things, and it really helps us in our drawing. So for example, a good example is that we made a polygon a couple of days ago. Oftentimes, the polygon will be kind of off, and let's say that I want the side to be vertical. I can do a vertical constraint on the side, and it will kind of pull the whole polygon over to be in line uh, uh, with the vertical edge. Um, the next one we're gonna do, I'm gonna leave um, the, the tangent constraint for right now. Smooth, symmetric, and equal. Okay, equal, equal actually what I'm gonna do really quick. So equal, let's say that we're drawing a, a, rect or a, um, a uh, triangle and equal just sets sides equal to each other. But notice it's only two, so I do one, then another, and then I do one, then another, and now we have an equilateral triangle. All right, so that's so these constraints, as you're drawing, it may seem that they're like not super useful, but actually they become very, very, very useful. So here, here I'm gonna give an example of how they become useful. So, so uh, let's say we had two circles and we want, um, we want these two circles to be kind of in line with each other. We could make the two, um, sorry, not collinear. <laughs> it would be easy to make them collinear because any two points would be collinear, right? So, uh, so let's say that we make uh, two lines coming down like this, okay? And we want to basically make a shape that's round on both ends, kind of, a, kind of this elongated shape uh, that has a big circle on one end and a small circle on the other. What you're gonna notice when you try to do this is this little gap right here, okay? And it would be very difficult to get this gap to disappear and kind of have the line go smoothly into the curve for the circle. And that's where tangent comes in, okay? So if we click the line and then the circle, notice how the line is now perfectly coming into the curve of the circle, okay? And we can do the same thing uh, down below. Whoops. Okay. There's our tangent constraint, and then we can trim out. Um, and notice how nicely that, that transition is then because we use that tangent constraint. Okay, so that's a good example for the tangent constraint. So these 2D constraints are very, very, very useful. And, uh, and if, if you get to know them and, and are able to use them proficiently, um, your drawing will be much easier and you'll be able to do a lot of things that you couldn't do without them. Um, okay, so those are the 2D constraints.